Hey there and welcome or welcome back to our channel. On this channel, we discuss mental health. My name is Shell. I am the host of our DID system. And something that I've been hesitant to admit to is our agoraphobia. Partly because I feel like we have so many disorders that adding yet another one seems excessive. I also didn't have a clear understanding of what agoraphobia is, and I felt like my symptoms weren't severe enough. Although admittedly, I use this excuse a lot to deny certain diagnoses. So what is agoraphobia? Agoraphobia is the fear and avoidance of places that might cause panic and feelings of being trapped, helpless, or embarrassed. A lot of times this manifests as a refusal to leave one's home or neighborhood. The diagnostic criteria for agoraphobia in the DSM are marked fear or anxiety about two or more of the following public transportation, open spaces, enclosed places, standing in line, or being in a crowd, or being outside the home alone. The individual fears or avoids these situations due to thoughts that escape might be difficult or help might not be available in the event of developing panic-like symptoms or other incapacitating and embarrassing symptoms. The agoraphobic situations almost always provoke fear or anxiety. The agoraphobic situations are actively avoided require the presence of a companion, or are endured with intense fear or anxiety. The fear or anxiety is out of proportion to the actual danger posed by the agoraphobic situation and to the sociocultural context. The fear, anxiety, or avoidance is persistent, typically lasting for six months or more. The fear, anxiety, or avoidance causes clinically significant distress or impairment in important areas of functioning. If another medical condition is present, the fear, anxiety, or avoidance is clearly excessive. The fear, anxiety, or avoidance is not better explained by the symptoms of another mental disorder. One must have all of these criteria in order to meet the diagnosis. To be completely transparent, I don't believe we have an official diagnosis of agoraphobia, but we're pretty sure that this is what we're dealing with and our therapist kind of treats it that way as well. As the host of the system, I experience the agoraphobia the worst. We have other alters that are afraid to leave our home, but they don't really know why. There are a couple of alters that aren't affected by the agoraphobia. For example, Jessica has no problem leaving the apartment and going to different places. For myself, I try not to leave the house except for my safe spaces. These are my son's school, my parents' house, and my friend's house. Now by safe spaces, I don't mean that they're free from triggers. I'm just not afraid to leave my home to go to these places. On a good day, I can also go to the local Aldi's or Walmart. I haven't always had agoraphobia. If I were to pinpoint when it started, it would be quarantine. There were a few things that were the kindling for it, but COVID was the match. I've had social anxiety ever since I was a kid. I have a lot of fear of embarrassment, rejection, and being left out. So I tried to avoid situations where this might happen. When I'm with other people, I am always on high alert to make sure I'm properly interpreting people's social cues. I often leave social situations exhausted and ruminate on the interaction to pick apart anything I might have done wrong. The difference between social anxiety and agoraphobia is that social anxiety is really focused on the fear of embarrassment and judgment, whereas agoraphobia is more focused on the fear of a panic attack or losing control. It's not just the open and or public space, it's the possibility of being trapped and being unable to get away if we get an anxiety attack. There is no one identified cause of agoraphobia, although there are a few things that seem to contribute to it. This includes chemical and hormonal imbalances, personality type, having anxious role models or family members that focus on control, childhood trauma, prior mental illness, and or a traumatic event. I think I can point to the moment my agoraphobia was triggered. It was the first time I went grocery shopping after quarantine. Part of the problem is that I have claustrophobia and I don't like having my nose and mouth covered. So wearing a mask can be very distressing for me. So in this instance, I was already incredibly uncomfortable and I hadn't left the house in weeks. In addition to that, I have a history of dissociating while grocery shopping, although at the time I didn't give it much thought. I was walking through the aisles of Target when all of a sudden I had a panic attack. I had to find an aisle that no one was in, remove my mask and try to even out my breathing. I was hyperventilating and crying and I was afraid somebody would see me. Eventually I was able to get it under control. 
I think maybe we probably switched, but I wasn't aware of the system at the time, so it's hard to say. Ever since then, I've been hesitant to leave the house, and the more I avoided leaving, the worse my anxiety got. This was such a new experience for me. I used to be the type of person that would run errands or go window shopping if I was feeling restless. Now leaving the house requires a lot of preparation and positive self-talk. Sometimes we won't be able to run errands until Jessica fronts. It affects our health too. For one thing, I spend a lot of time in isolation because I don't make plans. It also limits my ability to go to the doctor. For example, I've been putting off getting blood tests that I need done because I don't want to leave my apartment. It also affects us economically. We spend money on Instacart and Grubhub because it feels safer to order groceries and food than to leave to go pick it up. Even on a good day, I'll do Walmart pickups so I don't have to go inside the store. The reality is I'm afraid something bad will happen if I leave. I can't always identify what I think the bad thing will be, but it's a very real fear. This made me wonder if this could be more of an OCD thing, but I don't have the ritualistic behaviors that accompany OCD, so it does seem to be better explained by agoraphobia. I've been working with my therapist to address the agoraphobia. She encourages me to go to stores that are near my apartment to try to push the boundaries a little. She has also recommended we leave a list of things that need to be done for when an alter who doesn't feel the agoraphobia fronts. Jessica runs a lot of our errands. The ideal outcome is that we overcome agoraphobia. I don't like being afraid of leaving the house. I don't like being paralyzed by the thought of grocery shopping. I don't like wasting money on food delivery. The second best outcome would be learning to control our switches so that when we need to do things outside, Jessica can switch out and take care of it. The treatment for agoraphobia really does seem to be a sort of exposure therapy. CBT is indicated as a good therapeutic strategy eventually building the confidence to do more things one step at a time. For me, that first step would be to be less afraid of going to the stores near my house. Then I would gradually increase the radius of my safe zone. I really do hope I'm able to get through this. I seemed to make some progress over the summer, but once November hit, I stopped leaving the apartment and my anxiety came back. So now I'm back to isolating myself and have fallen into old habits. I'm hoping that once things warm up that I can convince myself to go outside again. I've noticed that a lot of systems I come across also struggle with agoraphobia. Is this something that you deal with? And if so, do you have alters that don't seem to be affected by it? And what strategies do you use to fight your anxiety? We would love to hear about your experience in the comments. Thanks for taking the time to listen to what we go through. And until next time, Take care and stay well.